I think it's uh, one of the biggest achievements one could ever want for a vaccine that uh, you can do the so-called fire and forget. You don't have to chase people up for a second booster dose. This means that uh, within a reasonable amount of time, uh, a few weeks, your organism has basically got to the point where it can withstand the attack of the coronavirus and uh, you can avoid having to go into hospital or dying uh, from this horrible disease. This is a major achievement. And an additional feature of the Johnson & Johnson virus is that it requires refrigeration and it does not require ultra-cold transportation. In the last few days we have seen an unfortunate public spat between various political groups uh, regarding access to vaccines, when in the reality we are having lots and lots of countries who haven't had even sight of vaccines yet. What we all need to collectively be thinking about is what is the consequence of allowing the virus to transmit in other countries uh, with regards to our own well-being. It's not just about protecting ourselves, it's about protecting the world. If the, vi if the virus circulates in populations elsewhere, mutants arise to which the vaccines will not work as effectively or at all against. And it's critical to point out that in the last 24 hours we've seen data from two separate vaccines showing that for the variant known as 501YV2 that originally arose in South Africa, uh, one vaccine has 57% efficacy and the other one 60% efficacy. What this means is that they don't work as well against the new variants. So if we keep arguing between ourselves about who's going to get the vaccine first or more doses of this and more doses of that and not focusing on getting the vaccination everywhere and getting transmission reduced as quickly and effectively as possible, we will be in a situation where these vaccines, the fastest ever developed in history, will be the fastest to become obsolete as well. Nobody wants that.